So in GSAP 3 exposes some utility methods, one of which is interpolate. And all you got to do is feed in a starting value, an ending value, and then you can optionally give it a progress value, which would be a number between 0 and 1, uh, representing the progress. So 0.5 would be halfway in between. And then it will return the linearly interpolated value um, you know, between those. So in this case, if we feed in uh, 0 for the start and then 100 for the end and 0.5 for the progress, then you'll see, of course, 50 is halfway between 0 and 100. Um, but this doesn't have to just be numbers. It could be strings. So let's say that we want to do uh, something with a, a unit like px at the end. Uh, so if we want to go from 200 or 20 to 200 uh, pixels, then halfway between that, if we run this, then we'll see that it maintains that uh, px unit on the end. It just it takes it from the end value here. And then um, it doesn't have to uh, just be numbers or strings like that. It could even be, it searches for colors. So if we say red, not rod, and we say blue for the end value, then it's smart enough to figure out those are colors and then it will return an RGBA value accordingly. So uh, here it is down here in this case. Um, but it, if it senses that you have a, um, an H HSLA value instead of RGB. So for the end value, let's just say we want to animate to this HSLA value. Then since those kind of interpolate differently, they, they look different when you uh, go between RGBA values versus HSLA, uh, it will maintain that in the uh, interpolated value. Now, another thing that you can do is, um, since it will search through the strings for you know any numbers and colors, we can have a complex value like this, and then it will match up. You know, as long as we have matching quantities. So in this case, we've got one number at the beginning here, and then we've got a color at the end. Uh, then it will figure that out and interpolate it accordingly. Uh, you can have as many numbers as you want. So see here, we're going from 0 to 20 pixels. Halfway in between is this. Of course, if we change the progress value to 25, 0.25, sorry, um, then you'll see that everything reacts as it should. So colors, numbers, uh, you know, strings, complex strings. And lastly, you can even do objects that have any number of properties. So in this case, we just have two properties. The first one is a number, you know, property named A is a number going from zero to 10. And then B is a, a color that's in this different format. Um, and then if we go ahead and hit run here, we'll see that it figures out that, yep, it's, it's an object and then it's animating. So, or not animating, I'm sorry, it's interpolating so that 2.5 is, uh, you know, the progress value that we fed in, in between zero and 10, same thing for the color. So lots of options. And, uh, you know, if you, the last thing I'll mention here is that if you don't feed in a progress value, then uh, the utility method will say, okay, uh, you must want a function back. So in this case, it'll record the starting and ending values that we feed in, and it will return a function that then we can call later on. So uh, in this case, uh, if I just, let's get this back to some simple values, like we're going to go from 0 to 100. And then uh, actually, if I just run this, you'll see that it's it's a function down here. So it's not going to you know look like anything fancy. But if we just take this and sorry, we will copy that. Let's create a new, uh, let's say, interp function. And then the interpolated value that's going to get printed out to the screen will be the result of what we feed in here. So interp func, and we'll feed in the progress. And then that should give us 
what we're expecting, 25 down here. So why would anybody want to do this? Um, if you find yourself, you know, calling this interpolate method many times, uh, feeding in the same starting and ending values, then you can improve performance by just calling that once, feeding in the, the starting and ending values, uh, which again, it, it records internally in that function that it returns so that then in the future, all you have to do is feed in a progress value. So if we say 0.5 here, um, you know, if you're calling something over and over again, then it can be very, uh, you know, efficient and useful to be able to just feed in a, a progress value. And then it gives you back the, uh, the interpolated value in between the starting and ending that you originally had passed in. So I'll show you some practical applications in another video, but for now, just wanted to show off the uh, interpolate capabilities. Hopefully it's useful. Enjoy.